substantial. The problem is, as we discussed this whole notion of income disparity, one of the interesting parts of it is, while productivity has really been gained, real wages and salary haven't. And Dr. Levy, would you comment on that? Yes, that's right. I mean, so to the extent that we're concerned about inequality, as, as Dr. Chen highlighted in his testimony, of course we do always need to be worried about the well-being of low-income families, of um, in particular the workers who are less likely to have health insurance. Um, and I think that's exactly why the idea of changing the hours threshold is so problematic, because you put many more of those workers at risk of having their hours reduced by changing the threshold for full time. All right, Dr. Thank Chen. You. Oh. Thank you, I'm going to, yeah, thank you. I'm going to go two to one now. So, uh, Mr. Reichert is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Chen, how does the 30-hour rule impact school bus drivers? Uh, Congressman, I think the reality is that many of these um, individuals are going to face the same kinds of difficulties as other uh, workers we've talked about. You might see, for example, that if they were to have their hours cut from 39 hours down to 29 hours a week, that they would be looking at a pay cut of roughly 25 percent or more. Uh, if they're cut from 35 hours to 29 hours, you're looking at a pay cut of about 20 percent. So obviously the, the impact is significant and school districts, the, the data is pretty clear with respect to school districts that they are feeling the pinch of the 30-hour rule. Uh, in fact, over 100 school districts have reported making changes to hours for people like school bus drivers, temporary and other workers, or just outsourcing that work entirely. Thank you. It, Mr. Chairman and, and uh, uh, Dr. Chen, of course, we know this is not a, a make-believe problem. Uh, it's, it's not a theoretical concern. It's not a political or ideological disagreement. This is really happening uh, to workers out there across the country. It's happening now. Uh, school bus drivers are having their hours cut because of Obamacare's 30-hour rule. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit this article for the record from the Huffington Post that reports how school districts have cut back hours for bus drivers because of this rule. Without objection, so ordered. I'd also like to enter into the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, a letter to you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and the ranking member from the Employers for Flexibility and Healthcare Coalition. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Dr. Chen, uh, I'd like to follow up on a line of questioning that uh, Mr. Johnson uh, began um, as to what happens when people lose hours and earnings as a result of the 30-hour uh, rule. We know that businesses are reducing employers' hours or reducing the size of the workforce in response to the 30-hour rule. So what happens to individuals' unemployment benefits if they're laid off? Don't uh, unemployment checks for the unemployed go down if people work and earn less while they're employed? Yes, sir, that would be an impact. Thanks, sir. How about the 401k contributions based on, on earnings? Won't those go down as well? Yes, sir, that would also be affected. So wouldn't that cause retirement income to decline and poverty to increase down the line? Uh, there's no question that retirement security would be one of the uh, side effects or, or less retirement security would be a side effect, yes, sir. Or are there any other examples of unintended consequences for the safety net from this misguided 30 hour, hour rule that you can, can think of? Um, you know, the, the biggest one simply is the loss of wages. The, the other thing I would say is that the sort of more global concern about cost increases created by the ACA. Uh, also makes it less likely that employers would offer health insurance to part-time workers. So we've seen recent examples of this, Target, Home Depot, uh, other companies, major companies have made the decision to migrate away from an offer of health insurance to part-time employees as well. And, and Dr. Chen, from the data in the back of your testimony, uh, we find that the persons who are most vulnerable to Obamacare's 30-hour rule are young females with a high school education or less, 59 percent of the vulnerable population are under uh, age 35, 63 percent are female, 53 percent have a high school diploma or less. Is that true? Yes, sir, that is true. These are the groups who are most likely to lose hours and earnings as a result of Obamacare's 30-hour rule. Do you think the administration intended for these groups to lose hours and earnings? Uh, I, I would hope not, sir. 
Won't many of them be single moms who are already struggling to raise children on a limited income? Uh, unfortunately, yes, that, that may be the case. And why do you think it makes sense to reduce or does it make sense to reduce their hours and wages as the 30-hour rule will do? Well, I, you know, I think that the reality is that this is another example of not thinking through the incentives clearly. And obviously what's happening here is that many of these individuals are going to feel the impact of the 30-hour rule, although that may not have been intended at the time, but certainly will be the outcome. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Dr. Rustani is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Leonard Frank has, is a constituent of mine in Lafayette, Louisiana. And when he was in college some years ago, he started working at a pizza hut. And he started probably at minimum wage and worked and saved. And today, he's a proud owner of America's Pizza Company, which is headquartered in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, they have 148 Pizza Hut locations in five states and 4,000 employees. A real entrepreneur, a great American story. And I spoke to Leonard, and he told me because of this 30-hour rule, every employee, every employee in his organization will be moving to a, to a less than 30-hour work week. The company, uh, he made a, an economic decision. The company's going to be penalized three to $4 million per year under ACA if he didn't make this decision. Furthermore, this, this decision will primarily affect college kids, first-time employees, and single working mothers. And in his business, he starts them off above minimum wage. He pays market rates. This provision is now forcing employees to leave the company to seek out minimum wage jobs to make up lost hours. Dr. Chen, is this the new normal for America's working families? We, we've certainly seen some uh, troubling trends over these last several years, Congressman. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 7.8 million Americans currently are in part-time work but desire full-time work. They're unable to find it due to uh, a variety of different economic reasons. Uh, and, and beyond that, uh, certainly a number of individuals will face, uh, as we argue, almost 3 million individuals will face potentially their hours being cut because of the dynamics created by the 30-hour rule. Mr. Troutwine, is, uh, you, know, you rec represent the retailers. Is this the new normal? I fear it could be. Uh, there is a one-year delay in the employer mandate penalties, so I think that has softened the <laughs> glide path. Uh, there is also a prohibition in the ACA against making uh, insurance-based employment uh, decisions. That may be deferring that, but uh, if I were out there running a store, I'd have to think twice about the next hire I make and where I place that individual in my company. So it's certainly um, 